Midwest tuna casserole. Another easy one after work. Throw it together for the kids. Well, let's start growing. Come on, let's start off. Hey, first start off with an entire heart of celery. You want to saute that. It has nothing to do with a bowl. Saute that heart of celery and put a little bit of olive oil. Get it all softened up for you. And then, of course, you'll have that set aside for later. Then we want to cook some noodles, some nice big extra wide noodles, maybe a 16 ounce package of egg noodles. And those babies, oh, doesn't Something take, like this? That's right, it doesn't take long. Now put them in there? Now let's toss them in. Go ahead, toss them in there. Nice big mixing bowl, everything goes together very easily. Then we want to throw in all of our ingredients, which is, of course, four six ounce cans of tuna and water. Ooh, we <laughs> Sorry, you said tuna in water, and I got the glop. That's uh, right. What's what he, the difference? What right? he's actually throwing in there is two cans of cream of celery soup. Oh, God, does that hold it together nicely? The tuna, of course, coming now for us. Couldn't even get it out of the can. That's right. How about eight ounces of mild cheddar cheese, which is optional for those of you less glutinous? Good, because we don't have it. No, oh, sure we do. Come on, it's right here. <laughs> Come right in here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Right on the old heart muscle. That's right. Stop it in about 10 seconds. And about half a cup of milk. We actually want to put in skim milk just for your mental uh, adjustment. Just because after the 18 ounces of cheese, that's going to help you. That's right. And of course, about a quarter cup of lemon juice would be nice, which I happen to have yeah. laying around somewhere. Nowhere handy, though. This is the ancient uh, Egyptian mi mixing technique of fold and stroke. <laughs> fold and stroke. This is the secret oh. ingredient right here. A little mm. flanger of that, oh, oh you got dollops for dollars. Let's put that baby back in the fridge, because that's where the good stuff goes. Newt feeds us to all the orphans. Oh, let's keep Newt out of this. How about a teaspoon of lemon pepper? Good stuff any day of the week. Here it is, about a teaspoon or so. <laughs> we use the... <laughs> We use the, the Landsat satellite method of uh, putting, so we just dump. That's right. Dump and run. And of course, we want to have about a dash each of some things that probably should have been out for us but aren't right now. I'm going to put the celery in, okay? Okay, you do that. Since I don't have anything to do. <laughs> okay. This well, was sautéed by uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. I'll leave him alone, poor kid. Uh, how about a little bit of... Dish us to the dash of curry there, just enough to, you know, let its presence be known. And how about a little bit of onion powder because it's processed and not only knows it's so much easier to you use. You want to get as much processed food in this dish as possible. That's right. And a little bit of garlic powder is even going to help you out. And if you've got I it... i got a plaque at Kraft. <laughs> the powder just got me. That's right. Ah, oh. A little bit of imported Greek oregano. You can get it down on Halstead Street in Chicago. Fabulous stuff. Now you should have the taste. consistency of a black hole. That's now. right. Now we want to put that into a nice little 13 by 9 inch casserole pan. I don't think it'll fit. All out. Well, give it a shot. What the heck, a mound? Dump it all in there. And of course, you want to get your oven preheated to about 350 degrees because that's going to help it cook a lot faster than not turning it on to 350 degrees. <laughs> There we go, spread that out nicely. And a nice little crunchy topping after Pat smooths that out is going to be some of those nice little French fried onions you can find in the store in the little can. Another canned, quick processed, hydrogenated item. Because if this won't kill you, that will. This will, yeah. Spread that right on there. And oh my goodness gracious, the kids will be not going to the bathroom too soon after this. <laughs> okay. Pop that in a 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. Going to catch me doing this, camera person? Oh, there it goes, into the old oven. 350. And we'll see you in about 40, 40 minutes. Bye-bye. Hey, you know, I think it's about time for that Midwest tuna casserole to be spelunked out of that there hot spot. It's been a lot, <laughs> at least 40 minutes or so. Let's see what it looks like. Come on. Take it out of the big radio flange. Oh. I'm eating here. Oh, yes. Call in the army. This is the Midwest tuna casserole. We had the best Midwest tuna casserole I think you could yeah. have. We did the vegetarian pizza before. We had the cake. Cake. We got uh, fabulous chicken divan, uh, divine chicken divan, tuna chicken pies and cakes. Well, with all this food, you can invite at least two of us over for a nice meal any Sunday night. So from Pat Hall, Dave Greer, a couple of fat guys, this has been cooking with the fat guys. See you later! Mantrupus.